Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my hashtag I'm in a no bite update number two. So I will link my playlist with my other videos um, down below. So I did my intro, I did my first update, and then I also did kind of a mini update in one of my weekly makeup baskets. So if you haven't seen those and you're interested, um, I will leave that link so you can check them out. So if you haven't seen them yet, um, what I decided to do for these updates was kind of structure them by um, around four questions. So I wouldn't ramble too much and to kind of focus what I'm going to talk about and so I can kind of compare how I'm feeling from month to month. So the first question is just how is it going? Um, pretty vague, but I'd say it's going really well right now, but I found February to be more tempting, I guess, to purchase things than in January was. In my other update, I mentioned that I, you know, hadn't gotten to the point where I was adding things in my cart and um, online and then not buying them, but I did do that quite a bit in February, but more towards the beginning of February. In the last couple of weeks, I really have not been tempted to buy anything at all. Um, I feel like, if you don't know, I'm doing a low buy, basically. I only want to buy 12 makeup items for the whole year, but right now I'm trying to save the first four items, or I might... Yeah, the first four items for the April VIB sale at Sephora. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later, but there were things that I was adding to my cart and, you know, just kind of steering it. And um, luckily right now I'm trying to save money too, so that was kind of the main factor that made me say, no, do not press purchase, um, and I would just X out. So yeah, so the beginning of the month was pretty hard, um, but now that we're at the end, and I feel like I just have to get through uh, March, and then April will be here, and if I remember correctly, the sale last year was towards the beginning of April, so it's really not that far away. So I'm going to kind of change the order of the questions, just because um, I feel like the way I did it last time didn't really make a ton of sense. So the next question is, what were you tempted by? And so I was tempted by a lot of things. If you saw my mini update, I was really tempted by the NARS Dual Intensity Eyeshadow at the NARS Dual Intensity Eyeshadow Palette. And I had a little mini freak out about that palette. And then um, the things I kept kind of putting in my shopping cart and then taking out were the Burberry eyeshadows. Um, Megan from Meg's Makeup 8, she did a video about how Burberry reformulated their shadows, but um, you could still get the old formulation from Saks. So um, I was looking at those and I was like, oh, I need to get the old formulation. But then I was like, you know, Megan said the new formulation is like just as amazing and there's no rush to get these. So I might as well just wait and get them at another time. So that was one thing that I was um, really tempted by. And another thing where the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks and so many people have been talking about how great they are and there were a couple days where I was just watching all the swatch videos I could find for those lipsticks and there are so many different colors that I would love. Um, Megan has a sad girl and I love that one and I love the name sad girl um, although I think there are like uh, like some sort of metallic shine or something to that one, which kind of scares me. Um, I would really want to see it in person before I would buy it. But the ones I really, really were tempted by were the coral shades. Last year, um, in the spring, I kind of went on this mission for the perfect coral lip color, and I, you know, swatched every coral lip shade in Sephora several times. I bought a few, I returned a few. Um, I just never really found the one shade I really had in my head. And I think the, like, I think the Anastasia Liquid Lipsticks have, like, three coral shades, if I'm not wrong. And I'm not sure which one I would want, because they all look, like, pretty close to what I wanted. So I would have to, I would really love to see those in person if I ever decided to bite the bullet and purchase one. Because, um, I think it's just, it's kind of hard to see. Even though there are a lot of lip swatch videos out there, I think, um, what, it really need to see something like that in person for me to decide which one I would want. But I think Vintage Coral maybe would be the one I would want. So Vintage Coral, maybe Sad Girl, um, although I want to see that one in person. And I mean they all looked really amazing, but I don't need that many liquid lipsticks. But those were the two kind of standout colors to me. Aside from those, um, I think those are the only real things that were tempting me this month. Um, but yeah, so the next question is, did you get anything new? And unfortunately, I did kind of break my note by. Um, so I did a swap with my friend here on YouTube, Miranda Pierce, and she requested this 
certain Milani blush. So I had to go to three different stores to find it, um, but I finally found it and was the last one left, so it's probably the last one left in all of Minneapolis, <laughs> so I found it for you, Miranda. But when I was at Walgreens, um, you know, I was so excited to find the blush, I pulled it off the shelf, and then out of the corner of my eye, I saw those little yellow tags saying that they were buy one, get one 50% off. And I saw also out of the corner of my eye that they had the color statement matte lipsticks, and I had seen a few videos on those, and I was really, really curious about them. They were out of almost every color except the one that I wanted, so I just kind of like grabbed it and bought it. So I feel really silly that I broke my no buy for a three, like it was what ended up being a three dollar lipstick because I think it was normally six something and um, it was the cheaper of the two items, so it was three dollars and fifteen cents. So this is it right here, it's the Milani Matte Naked, and I felt especially silly because. I had just posted my um, stash watching video of nude lipsticks where I was like, I have way too many nude lipsticks. But um, I've been trying some of those nude lipsticks out and a lot of them just don't work for me. So I'm going to be decluttering quite a few. And I have to say this one is already one of my favorites. It works really well for my skin tone and it's just kind of uh, my lips but better kind of nude shade. And I really like it, so I don't really have any regrets. And then if you saw my product polish update, I did end up buying two full-size OPI nail polishes um, that I have in mini form that I'm using up in that project. So once again, I bro I guess I broke my no-buy. Originally my no-buy was not going to include nail polish, but then I was kind of afraid that I was going to explode and buy like a ton of nail polish, so I decided to add it in. But now I think um, Curious Sparkles for her kind of beauty budget plan for the year, what she's doing is limiting herself to a certain number of lipsticks, or lipsticks, nail polishes, and then she has a notebook where she wrote it out and every time she buys one she's gonna, you know, cross off one of the boxes and then once she's crossed them all out she can't buy anymore. So I think I'm gonna kind of steal that idea from her and I'm gonna limit myself to the number of nail polishes I can buy this year. So for me that number is going to be 8 nail polishes and I already bought two, so I'm counting those two in the eight, and so I can buy six more over the course of the year. So I think that, that little adjustment will kind of keep me sane. If I ever feel like I really need to buy something, I can just go buy nail polish, and it's not too, I don't have that much nail polish. So um, my collection isn't out of control or anything, and there are some uh, like colors that I don't have anything of. Um, I really want a nude nail polish kind of color. When I got my nails done with my mom, I got kind of a nude essy color and I really, really liked it. So I kind of want something like that. And you know, there's, um, even though I have like 50, which sounds like I should have every color, um, I have a lot of, you know, certain kinds of colors and then I don't have like every type of color ever. So I think that limiting myself to eight will be a good way to go about this challenge. And then finally, I did it, you guys. I got the NARS Dual Intensity Eyeshadow Palette. Um, I did get this at Macy's and I used a store credit that I had from returning a Christmas gift. So I was really proud of myself when I had my freak out. You know, I did everything everyone says to do. You know, I talked it out with a bunch of people. I shot my stash. I recreated one of the looks I wanted to do with this palette with stuff I already had. And I still wanted this. So. Um, I was just, I thought about it for a long time, and then I bought it, and I thought about it some more. I didn't touch it for a while, and um, I was just thinking, like, you know, I have the store credit. I don't shop at Macy's normally, so it's not like it was going to go, it could go towards something I was going to buy anyway. No matter what I bought with the store credit, it was going to be something I wasn't going to buy otherwise, and, you know... I just, I still really wanted it, even though I did everything you're supposed to do to talk yourself out of buying something. And, um, I mean, I'm not super proud that I did end up picking it up, but, um, I think I'm glad I didn't buy it when I was kind of going crazy and, um, being totally irrational about it. So I'm glad I put some more thought into it, and I am glad that I used the store credit because, I mean, I really, really like it. It's a really great palette, but I think that if I had, it's so expensive, this is $79, which I think is insane. It's like, there are eight shades, so it's about $10 a shade, and um, that just is insane to me, so I think even if I had bought this at Sephora during the sale, 
and gotten that 15% off, I think I would have been disappointed in it and I might have even returned it if I had spent my own money on it. But since I didn't and it was kind of free, um, I really like it and I am happy that I have it. I'm sorry if I'm blinding you, I should probably stop holding it up. But um, yeah, so I mean, I don't know. Um, it's not the greatest choice I've ever made, I guess, but I really just, I didn't know what else to use that gift card for. Um, the only thing I'm really interested in at Macy's was makeup, um, and I had enough to cover this, and, um, plus more, I have like 20, 30 dollars left on the store credit, so, um, speaking of which, the Anastasia liquid lipsticks are at Macy's, um, but, uh, I really would want to see, I really want to see those in person, and I don't know if they have them in Macy's stores, at least any of the ones near me, I don't know if they're just online, so, um, you know, maybe sometime in the future if I can look at them in person, I might per pick one up, but yeah, so I did get this. I didn't need it, but I like it. I wore it last night and it was really pretty, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just, I was really nervous to admit this guy to you guys, so please don't yell at me too much, but, um, yeah, so... Um, since I did that, I am going to change the rules for my Sephora sale plan or whatever. Originally, I was going to let myself buy four items, and I am going to reduce that to three now. Um, I mean, I know I got this lipstick too, but I'm not going to count that because it was $3 and whatever. So, I'm not going to count that. But, alright, so the fourth question is what are you planning on buying? And in my last video, um, I mentioned a contour palette. And that's still something I really I think I will pick up during that April sale. So this month I did some research on contour palettes. I've been watching tons of reviews on a bunch of them, and there are even more that have come out since I kind of made that plan. So I went to Sephora um, at, towards the beginning of this month, and I just swatched um, the Anastasia, the Smashbox, and the Cap on D. And I found when I swatched them all on my arm together, the Anastasia one just looks so much warmer compared to the other two that it was like a real turn off. I was like, I do not want that because I have bronzers and ones that people say are good for contouring, but on me, I find they're super warm, so I don't want to get something else that just looks really similar to those. So I knocked out the Anastasia one, and it was between the Smashbox and the Kat Von D. And last month, I was really leaning towards the Smashbox because I thought it was simpler. It just has three products, and it didn't seem that complicated, but um, the Kat Von D, I realized, has three of the shades in the Kat Von D are pretty much exact matches for those Smashbox shades, and then you get other shades as well, and um, you get more product in that. So in that one, the contour shades are bigger, and then the highlighter shades are smaller, and I don't mind that the highlighter shades are smaller, and I don't remember how they compare to the pans in the Smashbox one. But um, I know the contour shades are definitely a lot bigger. So even if I just bought the Kat Von D and only used the three that are dupes for the Smashbox, I would be getting more for my money. So, um, and then I'm not as intimidated by the three different highlighting shades because I feel like those are pretty straightforward. I feel like the only one in the whole palette I might not use is the super deep one. So I'm totally fine with that because I don't mind paying, because I think it's $46 and the Smashbox is $45. So for one more dollar, um, I'm getting more product of the ones I know I will use, and then if there's another one that I don't touch, I don't mind. That's just bonus. So I really think I'm going to go with the Cap Von D. And then I also went to Ulta just because I know there were some different ones there, and at that point, um, my Ulta didn't have the NYX contouring palette that I know came out, but um, I swatched the Anastasia, one th or the Anastasia one there as well as the IT Cosmetics Sculpted Face Palette, and those two I felt like were pretty similar. They are both kind of warmer, and so I'm still pretty much stuck on that Kat Von D one, and that's the one I think I'm going to pick up. I have watched a lot of videos um, kind of reviewing all sorts of contouring palettes. Allura Beauty just did a really good one, a Battle of the Contour Palettes, and I know Too Faced just came out with theirs, but that one just doesn't really appeal to me. I'm using their Chocolate Soleil Bronzer right now, and I think it might be breaking me out, so I don't really want to use another product like that, and, um, yeah, so, uh, I think the Kat Von D is the one I'm going to go with, and then I know in my last update video I feel like I talked about a couple other things I might think about purchasing during the April sale, but I don't even remember what they are, so I clearly must not want them that badly, um, 
The only other item I was thinking about getting was the Kat Von D liquid liner in Trooper. I just used up a mini version of that and I loved it. It's my holy grail liquid liner. Um, I just think the brush tip is what I really prefer when it comes to a liquid liner pen. But um, I also just recently found out that the Jessie's Girl liner is a brush tip. I'm not sure if I ever knew that. I've heard a lot of talk about the Jessie's Girl eyeliner, but I don't have Rite Aids here in Minnesota, so I don't, I've never been able to try it, and I just, you know, I hear about it, and I kind of just ignore it because I know it's something I can't get. But Megan from Meg's Makeup 8 was filming, or I was watching her favorites video the other day, and she mentioned it was a brush tip, and I, my eye, my ears perked up, and I was like, oh, a drugstore brush tip. I would love if that could be my holy grail instead of the Kat Von D one. So I want to pick up one of those. I am visiting my grandparents um, in April, so uh, they have Rite Aids near them, so I think I will go pick up one of those. So those are the only two items I think that I'm going to be buying. Um, but, you know, who knows, there's still a whole month of things I could learn about and decide to buy, but I am going to limit myself to three items. And the only thing that is kind of making me a little bit nervous about April is, um, I've mentioned uh, in a few videos that my husband is going to be moving abroad um, temporarily and he's leaving in April and I also mentioned that I sent off an application a few weeks ago where something for my career that um, is really really important and really big deal and I'll find out in April whether I was accepted or not so we so I feel like um, I'm a little nervous because I'm pretty sure the weekend that I find out is the same weekend as the sale will be, just based on last year. So I feel like either way, whatever news I get, I might, you know, feel tempted to treat myself and purchase something from the sale. So if I have bad news, I want to cheer myself up, and if I have good news, I want to celebrate. So right now I'm feeling pretty level-headed, and I know that I shouldn't do that, but, you know, once the sale goes on, I don't know. <laughs>